Bonjour à tous, bienvenue dans le What de Ski Show, le Marc Garcia Ski Debrief. Welcome to all of you, to the Marc Garcia Ski Debrief. Today I have a special guest from England and he will uh, make the entrance clap and he will introduce himself. Right. <laughs> C'est parti, John. <laughs> well, hello. Uh, my name's uh, Sir John Ritblatt. Um, uh, I'm British. And I've had a long association with British skiing. Uh, I've skied myself because I'm very old uh, since the 50s, the 1950s. Um, but I became serious in um, UK terms from about 1980 when I took over the sponsorship uh, of British skiing and the racing. Um, and I became president of what was then the British Ski Federation but now I, we call ourselves various names, um, GB Sport, because you know the fashion is that it should be uh, all encompassing for people who are not only skiers, and of course we are a very sporting nation as you know, um, but I think we're now going to change the name again, <laughs> but um, we'll be the same people. John, thank you very much to, um, mm -hmm. to be with me. On my program, What we know pleasure. each other for a long time. We do. It's a pleasure to have you. I'm one of Mark's great admirers, <laughs> the world's greatest slalom skier. <laughs> John, uh, for the French people who don't know you very well, you are the right. president of the of the British Ski Federation. Right. You are Dylan C, the, the owner who is the main sponsor. Well, of, we uh, um, the, I started the sponsorship partly in my uh, on my own, and then my then I did it principally, but not solely, for my then company, which was called the British Land Company. And I did that for many, many years. And then when I retired from that, um, the sponsorship was taken up by a family company run by one of my sons, Jamie, Jamie Ritblatt. Um, and we did that for a good few years. Um, and now uh, I've in a sense, given up the national sponsorship, but I'm personally involved um, with other sponsorships that are involved with skiing. Uh, and the reason for that really is because we've become relatively well-funded, whereas before we had to manage uh, on a shoeskin, really. And uh, it was very hard going. Um, we had to raise money ourselves. It was considered to be an elitist sport right, right. Uh, and government was not always anxious to support um, activities that I have to say previously were probably by people carried on by people with independent means. Now, of course, we fully involved with the entire public. Um, and it's an entirely different professional level. We now have funding uh, from the lottery, the National Lottery, which was a great British innovation. And I'm also happy to say that with the change in atmosphere in the last two or three governments, since we hosted the, um, the Summer Olympics, uh, must have been in 2012, right. attitudes changed, and now it's realized that Uh, it's a very important national image for the British to do well. And you see this in the summer. And I have to say, we're now beginning to do really very well um, in international skiing. In, in and, the winter sports? Uh, in the winter sports, yes. In the winter sports. And, um, you know, we have a top slalom skier in the top 10. Um, we've been winning a lot of gold medals. Uh, in, in, not just in the downhill and the slaloms, uh, but also in the freestyles and the cross country. And it's very satisfying. And I'm really rather proud. And uh, I don't know whether my investment was ever <laughs> worthwhile, <laughs> but it's bearing some fruit. So it's good mm -hmm. to see that uh, with, with you, actually, with you, John, since 40 years, since you're president and one of the yes. top sponsors, that you decide to change the politi the sports politic for the winter sport. I, that, in, 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 uh, that, in your country. That's right. I think the biggest single thing that was very inhibiting in that it's a very traditional 
British way of doing things, that it's often very amateur. People have a lot of goodwill, but they may not have <laughs> so much professionalism. <laughs> and um, these days, things have to be properly organized. And uh, I was able to push for changes in the way the Ski Federation was established. And now we have a totally independent, properly constituted body that is highly professional with dedicated people. You know, we, have, we, we employ directly now our professional managers, our professional doctors, um, our massage people, our fleet of motor cars. It's entirely different. And the support is immediately obvious because our skiers now train for nine months a year. Yeah, right. You know, it's, it's a different thing. I heard also, uh, if you don't mind, uh, that you invest with one of your colleagues in uh, Grand Britain, that you invest some money in team to try to create yes. like, like, the win, yeah. like the British yes. Winter Sport Institute. Uh, uh, I have a, a great friend, very successful businessman called Hugh Osmond, and I persuaded him to make a really big investment to have a British ski academy. We, we do, we will take other children because we can probably take 200 children. Um, and uh, we've built a really first-class complex in team right by the, uh, the, the ski lift at Tino Luck. We've got the, the very good pally there. We've got wall climbing, we've got a proper gym. We've put everything in you could ever imagine in aids to training. And I'm sure it's going to be, it's only just open, really. Yeah. And I'm sure it's going to be a huge success. And we carry out the full span of teaching so that when our children go, whatever it is, age nine, age 10, they can study in team, um, do their, their college work, as well as train every afternoon. Besides that, between you and me, John, for our uh, yes. uh, spectators, that yes. Team is pretty high altitude. Yes. Does it also mean for the British sport system yes. to prepare the Olympics, to prepare the we're World We're using it. We're, <laughs> yes, we're using it. The rugby it, team. And it, it's, it's a bit nearer than going to <laughs> Kenya. We don't have to go to Africa. <laughs> so, and the football, it's very interesting too. The footballers are coming to team in the summer mm -hmm. because 2,000 meters is enough. Yeah, and, if, yeah. and if you run up to 3,000, You've got plenty. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So, uh, so it's a big strategy. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a big it uh, is. investment. With it's a big, big investment. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big Not investment. only winter. Yeah, correct. But no, also very important in the summer. Yeah. Very important in the summer. You are in advance compared to the French, actually. Well, some would say that's not hard. <laughs> and, uh, Thank you, John. You know, some of my best yeah, friends yeah, yeah, are yeah, French yeah. like you. <laughs> but... Uh, It's very interesting with, you know, Britain has the, the English, but call it the UK if you yeah. like, but the English in particular were the, were the leaders in world skiing. I mean, the, the English came to St. Moritz in, a, in eight to the Palace Hotel in 1865. By 1885, we had already built the Crestor Run. Um, and all the resorts like uh, Wengen, <coughs> the great downhill, um, with um, all the resorts round about, Muren, um, with the great, the Inferno race, which is a bit of a different kind of race, but uh, all these resorts were founded by the British. And of course, Chamonix, the British came to Chamonix. They, were, they weren't the first to climb Mont Blanc, but they were one of the first. Yeah. So there's a great right. tradition uh, in the UK uh, for uh, interests in skiing and climbing. And I have to say that it is known in English. The, the Scottish contribution has been very great um, and have a very good ski club. <clears throat> and a lot of our great champions have actually been Scottish. Yeah. <coughs> so it's good to see that from the past, I mean, recently, as you know, there was more as a ski as a pleasure <coughs> compared yes. as really it like was. Austria, France, you know, Germany, Italy was really competition yes. instead of the, the technique. But, but finally... <coughs> It's step true. by step. Yes, it became you're quite right. It became an adventure. It used to be a British adventure. We have no snow. Well, we have a bit of snow in Scotland, but not really. 
And um, they always loved the Alps. And it was a great adventure to, to leave England and to go abroad. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I don't have to remind everybody, <laughs> but uh, in the 1920s, <coughs> the British Empire was a third of the entire world because of the British tradition of going abroad. You know, and they, they, they went abroad and they uh, had great empires like Africa and India and Australia and Canada um, because they had this the zest of the island race to expand beyond the small island. Mm -hmm. Is it, if the people don't remember that the, the Kandahar horse, we speak in the ski like Chamonix, yes. uh, Vengen, yes. Muren, yes. Uh, Meringen, it was this girl came from Arnold uh, Lund. She came from, well, partly from, from Arnold Lund, but we had um, in India, we had a great uh, English general yes. um, and who loved to ski. And he came to Europe mm -hmm. and established all the, the, the races with Arnold Lund, mm -hmm. who was, I suppose, the first who established the, the slalom. Because in the early days, we didn't have a combined or a downhill. It was the slalom mm -hmm. uh, was the big race, mm -hmm. which the British invented. Good. Alors, now, John, you, you know, in the French, you are part, of course, of the FIS, yes. of the board, and yes. we, you have a new president. And you, I don't know we, him personally, but you, you make so many fantastic comments from this. Uh, yes. If the people don't know, yes. he's, the, he's the owner of the head ski yes. company and he's the new yes, president. That's right. And he said he's going to bring some new yes, philosophy. I, and I, new think, idea um, I think the fees had very long established uh, board. Um, and like all organizations, I think probably uh, there's a need for change. And I think um, that Johan Eliash, who's just been elected by a vast majority of the 70 votes from all the countries, is going to be a marvelous new president. I think he'll be executive, he'll be hands-on, I have to say he's a champion racing skier. He's the forerunner uh, at Wengen and at Kitzbühel, which is more than I would dare. And um, he's a very good sportsman. And he's also the proprietor and owner of Head. So he has a major interest in the sport and great knowledge. And I'm sure that we will find some very good changes. I think there'll be simple things that are obvious. For instance, we will have much more slalom at night. Now, when you think of the effect the bad weather can have, but at night with the lights, you haven't got a problem. So, and I think there'll probably be more races. It'll be more interesting, um, but that's a minor thing. I think there are many other organizational things that will be good for skiing, attract an even bigger audience. The, Eng the English audience, I think from memory, on the famous program called Ski Sunday, is up to four million. It's it's a big audience, it is, it you is. know. And yeah. in Europe, I think we can have at any one time we can have five hundred million people. So why by doing by the night is going to be a big better better impact. Absolutely, abs absolutely. Mm. Well, and of course, few things you know the parallel yes. and all the, the yes yeah, all the program and the yeah. heavy program and yes. things like that has to be and of course for the last 20 years more or less we had a british an english girl who had been the british ski captain uh sarah lewis uh she was the secretary general so we we've, we've had a strong interest in fees for, for a long time good it's good to yes. it's good to hear from you uh yeah if you don't mind john um how old are you 86 86. And before before we, we start our program, you said that last winter you spent almost all winter in well, Samoyed well, by ski leaks almost every day during I, five I, months. I did. <laughs> well, it, it, in a way, it's there's an expression in English that it's an ill wind that blows nobody any good. And of course, with the, the wretched virus, um, everything in London was shut. My business was shut. Um and uh, I have a place, as well as in Mejev, I have a place in St. Moritz. And um, the ski lifts, it was a miracle. The Swiss decided to keep the ski lifts open. There were, nothing else was open, no food, no restaurants, nothing. 
and I skied every day for five months and I've never done that. <laughs> anyway, it was relatively good for my skiing and I didn't break anything. That's, 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 so a, that's a good news. This was good news. You still, have, you still have like 10, 15, 20 pairs of skis in your ski room? Certainly. Certainly. One under May, your name, at, of at course. Least. Right? <laughs> at least. But I have to say that um, I think it was Atomic sent me some skis, I think two years ago, uh, 2.30. <laughs> the, pre <laughs> the pressure <clears throat> was 24. Whoa. I could hardly lift them. I took them out once in a straight line, and I said, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> no, I like to ski on my head race skis, yeah, exactly. which I can manage. <laughs> uh, what is uh, one of my last questions, John? What is, what is the future for you, for the FIS, but also for the British Ski uh, Federation? I think the, the, the Br British skiing has never, had the prospect that it has now. We are already doing very well, and uh, we're going to win a world. We've won World Cups in some of the some of the other disciplines, but I'm sure we're going to win a downhill um, and um, some of the other races. We already had the, 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 the first for the season in the European Cup mm -hmm. last this year. Yeah, and that yeah. was fantastic. fantastic yeah. I mean, really <clears throat> huge achievement. So I think that um, we, we're going to we, we're going to I think uh, continue to be one of the leaders. Okay, and um, I, I'm absolutely sure of it. And we have lots of talent. You know, it, it's different. Before we had children who were good skiers. Um, then they would go to school. Then they would have to work. Then they couldn't ski most of the time because they were at school. And then we had very good girls. But, you know, when the girls got to 14 or 15, they started to become studious or they started with boys. Yeah. And that's what, that's what can we do about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's different. Okay. We can educate them. Uh, we can provide them with resources. It's very, very expensive to support every skier. You need three elements of support. One, you need to bring in the youngsters to find out who will be good enough for the future because you've got that process of sorting them out. Number two, you've then got to tr train the top skiers the whole year. And when you've trained them and they're racing, you've got to pay for them. And they, it's, it's quite strenuous, quite a strain when you're a racing skier. I don't have to tell you. You're in strange beds and strange hotels. You have to have good company. You have to have your trainer. You have to have your manager. Um, you have to be looked after with the best equipment. And it's no good if you're, you've got very poor accommodation or the food is not right and your mm -hmm. diet's not right. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a different uh, dynamic now. Yeah, definitely. So right, okay. it, it costs big money. I think for this year's Olympics, um, I think we're going to need probably a minimum of 14 or 15 million plus additional sponsorships. And uh, that's a big investment. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will have it. <clears throat> Does it also mean that uh, if you say like 14 million that you get from the lottery, like what, half? Or oh, how do you calculate in England? I would say <clears throat> that we probably we probably get. Uh, I would say we get about a third to a half okay. from the lottery and from the government from the grant in aid. I would say, and the rest we get from you know a yeah. small bit from yeah. me yeah. And, and other people yeah. and uh, big firms. Yeah, but I think these these things we are probably the only one in Europe with the government and the lottery come much more to yes. in all sport. Yes. All sport. Yes. Which, which is, which yes. I think it's one yeah. of the big changement it on is. the professional sport. It's true. Things. Well, we have a sport. <laughs> we have the Department of uh, Sport, Culture and Sport, uh, whose only role is to propagate sport uh, and uh, similar activities, including, it includes theatre and uh, yeah. 
libraries and other things of that sort. Um, but it's become a national endeavor. You know, the British like to win. You know, they, they've spent, two, two, uh, you know, yeah. a thousand years <laughs> winning. <laughs> they don't want to stop now. <laughs> so, so good. Alors, Sir John Greenblatt, what I can wish you to continue like that for, for tomorrow, next year, winter? Are yes. you going to go in Olympics? Depends. Uh, it, it depends. I haven't decided yet. And uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I haven't uh, firmly decided. But we've got a lot of people going. For sure. So... We'll decide. Okay. Maybe I better continue skiing while I can. Do you think? Sure. Sounds good. And if you, and if I'm to keep up with you, yeah, it will be I, it will I be need, a pleasure. John. I need we'll to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> if you can, if I have a chance to spend one or two days with you, <laughs> it will be a pleasure. So true. Sounds good. Uh, merci beaucoup, John. Well, Thank you very much. Is there anything anything else that I I, I lost by talking about business winter with you? Or, or, I don't think so. I think it's very nice that all my family like to ski and um, they're very interested in the sport. Um, and um, I'd like to, uh, I think we just have to make sure that, with, that we don't confuse professionalism with commercialism. It's different. It's different. We need a professional body We need professional support. We need professional uh, races, but we don't want it to become wholly commercial. And I think that is an important. Of course, we want our champions to receive recognition, <laughs> um, but I would quite like to see perhaps not just the leading uh, 10 receive adequate rewards so that they're not always struggling to earn a living. I don't want our skiers to feel that they ski, then they get to 35 and they've no money at all. You know, um, no sense we, for you. we have to look yeah. after them um, and make sure that they get, that they're adequately re re rewarded. It doesn't mean to say we've got to pay for the losers all the time. We can't do that. But we want to feel that those who are vocationally dedicated are looked after. Great. Super. That's Anything else to say? No, no. <laughs> yeah, of course, the other thing is that, the, the other thing is that um, not a lot we can do about it, but we're trying. But I think we'll have to continue to make sure that we have adequate facilities to keep manufacturing snow um, in a green way. I think we've already got rid of the chemicals. I think the systems we've now developed But we're going to have to supplement snow. And we just have to make up our mind that resorts will have to continue to invest, but they'll have to invest very professionally. It's no good a small village thinking that it's got the expertise. It hasn't. I know what you mean. That is very, very important. And the lifts have to be state of the art. People have got big choices of what they do these days. And uh, so facilities have to be good. Um, you have to provide. It, it's not like the old days where you'd rough it and people would say, oh, you're a tough guy. <laughs> it's changed. Yeah. You know, this winter, I skied a couple of times. It was nearly minus 30. Was I glad to have electric gloves? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Super. Um, Good. Thank you very well, much to thank you for uh, asking welcome, me. Uh, welcome in your house, beautiful Good. house here in Mujev. Thank you. And uh, now you have you need to make Bian the clap for Bian and oh. I will close. Merci John Rublat. <laughs> Merci. Merci. Merci John. Thank you very much. <laughs>